this downtown area is famous for two things, and I can bet it's not what you think it's for. To find out what they are and to learn more about this place, just come along with me. Today, I'm coming to you from Pittston, Pennsylvania, and I'm right here in the downtown area. We're gonna do a tour of this place, and along the way, I'm gonna be sharing some of its history, showing you what's here, including places like this, an abandoned supermarket, and including the two things that this city is famous for. The way I'm gonna be navigating through downtown is on my new product, the Porto Max electric scooter. This is made by Hubsco, the same company who made the Hub Beta and Hub Alpha e-bikes that I reviewed on my channel. To start out, I'm gonna take a few moments to let you know about the features of the scooter, but if you wanna jump right to the tour of the city, just go to the timestamp on the screen. Right now, let's talk more about this electric scooter. As you can tell, I am standing in the shade of this abandoned supermarket, which we will talk more about later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. First off, I wanna thank Hubsco for reaching out to me and allowing me the opportunity to share this product with you. As mentioned, I have reviewed two of their e-bikes before. This is my first time reviewing one of their scooters. They do have a small lineup of scooters, this one being the Porto Max, which is a sit-down scooter. But you know what? Let me bring you over closer to it and we'll check it out together. So starting up here on the handlebars, we do have rubber grips, front and rear mechanical disc brakes with the combination of electronic braking. So you do have a dual braking system. You do have your thumb throttle here and your display screen with a one button design. Long press to turn on and off. A quick press when it's on will turn on the headlight and to turn it off and a quick double press will take you through the three riding modes of low, medium, and high. Low is a walking speed. It goes roughly around four miles an hour. Medium will go around 10 to 12 miles an hour, and high will give you the max speed of 19 miles per hour. Coming down below the headlight, we do have our locking mechanism. That's because these handlebars are foldable. They will fold down and make this more compact and easier to transport. It will fit in the back of nearly all vehicles. This does ride on 12 inch pneumatic tires and coming to the deck here, you do have a good amount of space to position your feet. Me being size 13, I don't have any issues with it. I do wish it was a bit wider, but it is in uniform with the rest of the scooter. If it was overly wide, it would stick out and probably not look as streamlined as it does, but I don't really have much of an issue with it. But I think if they went like an inch wider, it would be even better. Now, inside the deck is a 36 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery. Charging port is right there on the front of the deck. You do have some reflective stickers on the side and coming to the back is gonna be the motor. This is a 350 watt rear hub motor. It does peak out at 500 watts. And above that, which does come standard, is this wire rack. The seat itself is actually pretty decent. I would rate this a three out of five. Nice cushion to it, good width. Not bad for short rides, even up to a 30 minute ride. I have no issues with this seat, which is adjustable as well. You can retract it out of the stem there. And the handlebars are not adjustable as far as height. That is a fixed position. This rack is removable. It's only on there with four screws, so you can put other racks on there or if you want to customize it somehow with something else you're able to, it does give you a little platform there to mount something onto that. A couple other things to mention, this does have an auto headlight. So if you do go into a dim environment, say going through a tunnel or just a dark space, the light automatically does come on and does shut off when there is sufficient light. But as I mentioned, you can manually toggle the headlight on and off. This weighs in at only 43 pounds, so it is really lightweight. I mean, nearly anybody can lift this up, put it in the back of the car, no issues at all. It does have a payload of 260 pounds, which is pretty respectable. A guy my size, I could carry myself and some gear on back and not have any issues. And you may be wondering about range. This does have an estimated range of 35 miles, but as I always mention in my review videos, that is dependent on the rider's size and terrain they're riding on. So if you're a heavier guy, 
closer to 260 and or riding up a lot of hills, you're not gonna see 35 miles. If you're on the opposite end of that, you will see closer to 35. And in case you're wondering what it's like to operate the scooter, well, come with me and we'll take a ride together. Once you do power it on, it does default to medium mode. You can obviously change it to low or high. I do have it in high right now. And even with the sunlight, there is good visibility on this screen. And to go, just give it the throttle. Pick your feet up and you're off to go. We are riding slightly uphill right now, going around 11, 10, 11 miles an hour. It's doing an okay job. Not a, it's not gonna be a great hill climber, but for slight inclines like this, not a big deal. Very easy to maneuver, very nimble. Low center of gravity since you are sitting on it. I could go one-handed, no issue, very stable. So it's a, really it's a joy to ride. They do advertise this as a grocery getter. So if you wanna to run to your local gas station to get yourself a drink, or to say convenient food mart right here, this would be the great, great tool to utilize. Save yourself on some gas, and you can get there, get a bag or two of groceries, put them in the back in your rack, and off you go. The dual braking system on this works really great. Not only does it stop you efficiently, but it does take a little bit of that power and put it back into the battery. So the combination of electronic and mechanical disc brakes works really well on this scooter. Now, if you did watch this review portion of the Porto Max, make sure you watch the end of the video as I will share my final thoughts, both good and not so good, because there are a few things that they could improve upon with the scooter. But now let's tour downtown area of Piston, Pennsylvania. Now throughout this video, I'm gonna be mentioning other things I have filmed in the area, all of which will be linked down below in the description. But we're gonna be starting our tour in the southernmost area of the downtown area. Now the downtown area is split up into two directions, north and south, with one-way direction roads. At some area, which I will show you where that is, it does go to a two-lane road, both directions. And we're up here now, or down here I should say, the southern area where the split is, it takes you in two different directions. So starting off here, on the right-hand side of the split is an empty, vacant lot. A lot that has just some gravel and looks like the dirt was moved and worked on recently or altered, as I like to say. That's because a motel sat here for a number of years, actually a number of decades. I don't know the name of it, don't know when it was last in business, but there was a motel here that I've seen nearly all my life passing through this area, but never seen it open, never seen it in business. There's been like one or two cars, which may have been the owner's cars, but I believe sometime in 2023, they did tear it down. And now it is an empty lot, which most likely will be redeveloped at some point. But as we come up further, there is a Dollar General store here, which is also relatively new, I guess you could say, within the last few years. But again, those of you local to the area, who passed by this area, knew there was something here prior to this Dollar General and something that I filmed. So right in this area, from the Turkey Hill over to here, was I believe four abandoned homes. And if I recall correctly, I did film three out of the four. The one closest to Turkey Hill was the first one I filmed. It was full of family heirlooms and possessions and memories like pictures, trophies. Whole life was left behind. So that was the first house I filmed. There was another house, which I called the dead bird house because inside of it was just dozens of dead birds that got trapped inside. And there was a third house that I filmed that was, I believe, a rehab facility of sorts for women. So they were eventually demolished, which I did film the demolition of those homes. And they did redevelop it with a bank and Dollar General. So as I mentioned, everything that I have filmed in the past will be linked down below in the description. Just scroll down on the Seymour area, and you'll find links to everything I have filmed here in the Pittston area. Riding the sidewalk, heading north now, and I'm gonna cover some ground here, and then there's something pretty cool I wanna show you. A business that has a really unique facade. Come down to the intersection of Swallow and Main Street, and you'll see a castle-like structure. 
That is the Sapphire Salon. And I don't know what it was prior. Don't know if it's always been that type of facade, but it's a really iconic structure here. Got the blue turrets of sorts. And just looks like a, like a mighty building. Built like a castle, as they say. Streets here are lined with trees that are just starting to bloom, offering some nice colors of whites and pinks. And you can see some of the homes here, different architecture. It's also a beautiful day here in April. It's supposed to be a high of like 77 degrees, just one day after the solar eclipse, which was cloudy here. So we didn't get to see much of anything. Some people got some shots. I wasn't so fortunate. Scooter's doing pretty good too. I'm able to ride it one-handed, no problem. Now coming up here is where the directions do change from bi-directional to one-way. So on the left-hand side where that car is coming out, that's where the one-lane road heading south does meet up and it turns into a two-lane road. So we do have one-way direction going north from Kennedy and Columbus heading north through the downtown area. It is a one-way road. And right here where the two directions do meet is a statue of none other than Christopher Columbus. Got a nice little memorial here for him with some flowers, some flags, some landscaping. And it says the Columbus League of Luzerne County, 1969 placard there of the officers and members and friends of the Columbus League of Luzerne County. One of the more notable business here in the downtown area is Rock Street Music. This place has been here for a long time. I don't know if it's still open for business. I mean, they still are full of merchandise. But this was the name. The name that was known around the area, the place to go if you wanted musical instruments. I know when I was in high school, a lot of people I knew who were into music I always talked about this place. I always shopped here for their musical instruments, whether it be drums, guitar, or anything else. But Rock Street Music, let me know if it's still open. But it is still situated here along, I guess this would be Main Street in downtown Pittston, right across from Christopher Columbus. Uh, just to keep things safer for me, I am going to be staying primarily on this side of the one-way road. I don't want to be crossing back and forth if I don't have to, but I will be pointing out things on both sides of the road because there are things to see. And I will start sharing with you some of the history of downtown Piston or the city of Piston. Share some little tidbits of information as well as show you what this town is famous for. Not one, but two things. Once we do reach the northernmost part area, we will be heading southbound on the one-way road, show you what there is to see over there as well. And in total, you will get a good sense of what the whole downtown Pittston area is like and what it has to offer. Now, the city is named after the British statesman William Pitt the Elder. The city was settled around 1770 by the Susquehanna Company of Connecticut. It was originally called Pittstown. It was incorporated as a borough April 30th, 1853, and then incorporated as a city December 10th, 1894. The population in 1920 was just over 18,000 people, and in 2020, the population was just over 7,000. Now, I am partially incorrect. I did say this town is famous for two things, and it is. I wasn't kidding or joking about that, but when I come to think about it, it's actually four things. Two positive things, two not so positive. Let's start off with the positive. You may notice behind me, right over there, is a big mural, and then down there is another mural. So for one, the downtown area is known for murals. There's a lot of murals here, which depict the history of this town, things that were involved with it, such as mining, railroading, other things of the sort. So we will be seeing lots of murals along the way. But if you can see that mural down there, that mural is tomatoes. Yes, Pittston is known as the tomato capital of the world. Do you want to know why? Of course you do. But according to the Library of Congress in the 1930s, Pittston was dubbed the tomato capital of the world because it has fulfilled the high demand for tomatoes by metropolitan New York. They celebrate with the annual tomato festival, which has been going on since 1983 and includes a parade, ugliest tomato contest, tomato fight, where dozens of people throw tomatoes at one another and more. As we continue down, a couple storefronts here. 
and one of the more incredible murals I've ever come across, and some street art. Do have these crazy wire figures on both sides of the road holding a wire across. I don't know the purpose of that, but they are standing on top of cartons or crates of tomatoes, including, yes, condensed tomato soup. Instead of Campbell's, it's Pittston. Looks like that's the first prize winner right there. So we will see a lot of things referencing the downtown city area being the tomato capital of the world, including art sculptures like this. But big tomato mural up there on the side of that building. Looks like they were thrown at the building, splattered, probably during the tomato fight. But let's come over here and check out this incredible mural. This is also the same area where the tomato festival does take place. This parking lot, the one above and behind that, they do have everything from uh, crafts for sale, carnival rides, all types of foods. Like I said, parade, pageant, contest. But look at this mural. The detail is remarkable. Fortunately, you can't get it fully in view with the vehicles here. We are here on a weekday, but just take it in though. I will be snapping a few photos as well and sharing a photo montage later on in the video. I believe there are some famous people on here as too, on here as well, I should say. Um, whether they're famous for the city or something else, locals may know, mm -hmm. but I did hear that rumor that there are some famous people depicted in this incredible mural. It says inspiration. We're at the pasta shop there. Gentlemen there are painting more of the mural. And even up above, if you look, there is that awning area, which is painted as well. It's a little girl looking down from above. So maybe some sports figures here. Lifelike depictions, like really well done. Whether it's one artist or a combination of artists, it just so incredibly well done. It looks like maybe Elvis right there. And I do see it looks like a pool player right there. Hatchie Malachi, local figure. I was actually on her show when I was in I believe, kindergarten on WVIA. Crossing past Tomato Festival Drive. Dime Bank and Trust Company. Another nice looking building there, especially the, the door front there. It has like a bronze piece around it. And as we continue up, the Crossing Community Bank is another magnificent mural. Probably my favorite one in the downtown city area here, depicting mining and railroading. From left to right, you have the coal miners, looks like the breaker boys. And you have the women working probably in the, the linen company and then the steam train. I wait for some cars to move out of here and we'll check it out in more detail. Now, I did state linen. The word I was searching for was garments as workers in the greater Pittston's garment industry. So if you want to pause that to read that, you are more than welcome to. Again, another magnificent mural here. As this gentleman walking by, you can see the sense of scale, how large and grand it is. Pittston is certainly rich in coal mining history and railroading because Pittston is also home to the Reading and Northern Railroad. The Northeast, I'm sorry, Wilkesbury Scranton Northeast Regional train station is just a short distance from here. And actually 2102 is doing one of their Iron Horse Rambles to Pittston for the Pittston Tomato Festival, something that's never been done. So that is happening later this year. I will put a link to the website down below if you wanna get more information or possibly tickets to ride that train ride from Nesquahoning, I believe, to downtown Pittston. Being pulled behind a steam locomotive similar to that. Actually, I just met one of my viewers here. I'd like to introduce him to you. He's right here. His name is Tony. 
the tomato mule. That's no joke, that's really his name. Taking the sights and sounds of downtown as it's happening. A lot of storefronts here. Gives you that small town feel. Going past the, the landmark in Pittston. Looks like another former bank as well. And this here on the left hand side is the Y, the YMCA from the famous song, YMCA. I can't sing, but you know the song. And some church bells. And another little mural up in the top corner. Greetings from Pittston. Something unique I found here is a business called Drip Coffee Company. And they're actually situated inside of a former drive through teller window of a bank. You could walk inside, get a cup of coffee, or use the drive through teller window and get a cup of coffee. Great way to utilize former bank space into something else. If there's any Star Wars fans here, well, you may recognize this fire hydrant as it is painted as one of the robots, I believe. I think that is supposed to be R2-D2, if I'm not mistaken. Tell me if I'm correct or not. It does look like R2-D2 from Star Wars. Music scene. I do have Geisinger up here. And we are coming towards the end of our northbound tour. We've got another mural up here. And something else just passed that I want to share with you. And then we will be heading southbound. Next to this little courtyard is another mural. This one possibly depicting like the tree of life. Person reaching up for the tree. Not sure if those are apples or tomatoes. Obviously tomatoes don't grow on trees, but since it is the tomato capital, I guess you can kind of say it could be tomatoes. There's actually an eagle soaring up there as well. But I'm going to call that the tree of life. I did make a brief pit stop here. In the center island of the roads is a statue. This one is for the coal miners. This monument erected in commemoration of the American Bicentennial is dedicated to the coal miner of Greater Pittston in appreciation for his unselfish sacrifice of labor beneath the earth for the promise of a better future for generations to follow. We owe him much. Pittston Bicentennial Committee. And this is where we're stopping for our northbound tour. We do have some signs showing Route 11 left. Straight ahead is Duryea, which is also straight ahead, the Wilkesbury Scranton Regional Train Station of Reading and Northern. And taking left will take you over towards Kingston and Tunkhannock. That is because this is one of two bridges that cross over the Susquehanna River, but the only bridge that's in operation. This is the Fort Jenkins Bridge a concrete bridge that does span the Susquehanna, which is Route 11 South, going in that direction. And again, the only way to pass over the river into West Pittston and heading towards Kingston, Tunkhannock, Exeter, Wyoming, because the second bridge that spans the river is shut down and we will be seeing that pretty soon. But if this bridge ever closes down, people are gonna be stuck because the nearest bridge is miles away It'd be a long, long detour to cross over the Susquehanna River from here in downtown Pittston. We are now traveling southbound on the one-way road. Got a few things along the way here to show you. And I actually may cross over the road for our first item here. 
And this is also the back side of the YMCA, just to kind of put things into perspective. One of the first things you might see when you're heading southbound, if you look to the right, is a firefighter's memorial. This is the Pittston City Fire Department, West Pittston Host Company number one, dedicated in memory of firefighters John F. Lombardo and Leonard C. Insulaco II, two brave heroes who perished in the line of duty on March 15, 1993, while fighting a fire on North Main Street, Piston City, their memory will live on in our hearts forever, lest we forget. It's a warm spring day, the bees are out today. Keep my distance. In the background here, we have the Water Street Bridge, the second of the two bridges that do span the Susquehanna River. This one is no longer operable. They decommissioned this, I believe, three or four years ago because it was structurally unsound, couldn't hold the weight of commercial vehicles. For years, it sat close to vehicles, but pedestrians could still cross it, as well as people on bikes or scooters like myself, because last year, I actually did a scooter review video on the bridge. It was a perfect place for it because there was no traffic, just a few people walking by, and I had basically the whole thing to myself. Now it's completely fenced off to all traffic and pedestrians. Reports are is that this bridge needs to be replaced and it's not supposed to be replaced until possibly 2026, another two years from now. So that's why I said if the Fort Jenkins Bridge, which is just through the tree line there, is ever inoperable, the downtown folks or people over there on the other side trying to cross over are gonna be in for a big inconvenience. Those of you local to the area too may remember back in the day, this bridge used to be illuminated at night. They had like rope lighting or neon lighting on the spans. They used to change colors. So seeing it at night, whether you're crossing over it or approaching from a distance, it was more of an iconic sight. You knew you were, knew where you were instantly seeing the lit up bridge. And then at some point, the lights stopped lighting up and eventually we are here we are today to an inoperable bridge. I know they've done studies on it multiple times to see if they can utilize it in some way other than having to do a full total replacement. But I guess it would cost more to update it than it would to tear it down and build a new one. So Water Street Bridge, one of two bridges here in Pittston, downtown area, and the only bridge that you can't cross anyway. Now, if you ever do want to get good views of that bridge, I will show you where you could obtain those views. I could be mistaken, but I thought this used to be a Domino's, but it's actually a Pizza Hut. Yes, these are still in existence. This one is takeout only, but they do have a Pizza Hut down here in the downtown area. But let me know, was that formerly Domino's? Southbound again is tree-lined. Gorgeous blooming trees, smells really good. And another place to eat, fast food-wise, is BK. Have it your way. Burger King. Let me know, those of you who do eat fast food, are you a Bur Burger King person or McDonald's person or it doesn't matter or maybe neither at all. I do like a couple things at Burger King, but not a huge fan of their fries. Their fries are some of the worst. Just a short distance from the southbound street where we're on brings you down to the Riverfront Park. This brings you Riverside of the Susquehanna River. This is just a little park area, but offers you some incredible views of not only the river, but the Water Street Bridge and in the distance, the Fort Jenkins Bridge. Now, the park is not in the best conditions as of today because there was some recent flooding. The sidewalk down here is covered in silt and sediment and mud because this was underwater recently from really heavy rains that were ongoing for multiple days. So it stinks here. It's not cleaned up yet, but they and this does happen from time to time and they do a pretty good job of cleaning it up but it's a place you could come walk around sit if you wanted to take some pictures read a book these apartments or condos or townhouses whatever they are have a really nice view and don't have to worry about flooding from up there if you want to access this place there's two ways you could do it you could either take steps right by the firefighters memorial where it says riverfront park or you could take the steps down and walk over here or pass out pizza hut pass out this place and there is access and a parking lot over there you can walk down cross over the train tracks and they'll bring you down here 
While we're here, I figure I might as well tell you about the two other things that this city is famous for. We talked about the two good, the murals and the tomatoes, but there's another thing, and that is mining disasters that happened within the city limits of Pittston. There was two of them. The first one was the twin shaft disaster that took place June 28th, 1896. The site of that disaster is actually on the property of the Reading and Northern Wilkesbury Scranton Regional Train Station. They do have a fenced in area and a placard there stating about what took place in the wind. So that is just about a mile or two away from here. The other one is actually along the train tracks in this direction heading south. One I've actually made a video on known as the Knox Mine Disaster that happened January 22nd, 1959, a bit more recent. Now of the two mine disasters, the Knox Mine Disaster is the one that's talked about the most. That's because not only it's more recent, but of how it took place. So the Knox Mine Disaster happened just a couple miles south of here along the river. And what happened, and this is just me putting it together quickly, but miners were mining underneath the Susquehanna River. They were supposed to keep at least 50 feet of distance between the bottom of the riverbed and where they were working. Well, the mine foremans and the owners were greedy. They wanted to get the most coal that they could as possible. Told the workers, keep mining up, rob the pillars, get closer to the bottom of the river. And there were some parts where they were only as shallow as five feet between the bottom of the river and where they were working, where they could actually hear the water rushing over them. Well, eventually that gave way, the water broke through, flooded the mines, and you could imagine what happened from there. One of the first places I showed you is now one of the last places we're checking out. The former supermarket known as Quinn's Shore Save. This is basically an abandoned building. Although it is locked up, you can't get inside of it. But this supermarket has been here for a number of years. I think it changed name over time. And it closed actually on my birthday, 2022. So we're here April, 2024. It's been sitting this way for over two years. On the inside though, it is mostly cleared out. You can see the scarring on the flooring where the checkouts used to be and the shelves and aisles. Just a few things in there like a wheelchair, some discarded items, most of it's trash. It did remove anything of value. Now the reports are is that this is gonna be demolished and they're gonna put a combination of a movie theater here and a parking garage to help alleviate parking in the downtown area. I don't know, you know what's going where, but it has been reported in the news that this will become a theater of sorts, whether it's a movie theater or a theater with like live production shows, but a theater and parking garage will occupy the space here of Quinn's Shore Save Market. I would like to take a moment to share my final thoughts about the Hubsco Porto Max electric scooter. Overall, it's a really fun piece of equipment to ride around on. I put on five miles today and we went down one battery bar. I say that's pretty good. For a mat of my size, we did climb some slopes and elevations and we're stopping and going a lot, but it's nice to sit down on it nice comfortable position overall easy to operate super simple but there are a couple things that it's lacking that they can't improve upon number one it needs a horn or a bell of sorts i did come behind people numerous times i had no way to alert them i was coming this is super quiet so i had to verbally say you know coming behind you on your left on your right i think anything that comes out these days whether it be an e-bike or a scooter should have either a bell or a horn Mechanical bell, super simple. Electronic horn could be incorporated. Obviously, you could buy an aftermarket one for cheap, put it on yourself, but they should come standard. A horn or a bell is desperately needed on this. The second major thing that this needs is a brake light or tail light or combination of both. It does have a reflector on the back, but if people are behind you, especially if you're riding in a group or you're riding at night, you hit your brakes. No one's gonna know that you're stopping. A brake light should be required on any e-bike or scooter that does come out. Nearly all of them have it, with some exceptions. But you can buy an aftermarket flashing tail light that does have a rechargeable battery or take like a AAA battery for inexpensive cost or price. But again, I think it should be standard on equipment like this. The last thing this could use is suspension. This doesn't have any suspension at all in front or rear. With that being said, it didn't ride terribly bad. 
With the 12-inch pneumatic tires, it did absorb some of the bounces and cracks in, in the road and on the sidewalks. So it wasn't a terrible ride, but either front and or rear suspension would go a long ways. But with that being said, it wasn't a terrible ride. My High Boy S2 Pro with these solid, solid rubber tires is a much more stiffer ride compared to this. This was actually a really comfortable ride. The seat plays a lot in that too. It's a nice, comfortable, cushy seat. But being that it's compact, can fold up a little bit, lightweight, and really inexpensive, if you're looking for something to be a grocery getter, just to jet around downtown like I did, or something fun to ride for younger ones in your family, consider the Huffsco Porto Max. The link with the latest pricing and more details will be provided down below. I did want to mention too, while I was riding this around downtown, the police did see me riding it numerous times. Not once did they stop me, question me, or say anything about me riding on the city sidewalks here. But I do recommend you check with your local municipalities to see if scooters are allowed and where. The downtown area to say is a nice little downtown area. Certain parts of it do give you that small town feel with the storefronts and the little businesses. But you also know that you're in a, a city of sorts. No big skyscrapers but loads of history. Mining, mine disasters, railroading, rail history, and you're also in the tomato capital of the world. You come here, you could claim it and take pictures and say, hey, I visited the only place in the world that has ownership of the tomato capital of the world. I wanna know though, have you ever visited or stopped at the tomato festival? And if so, have you partaken in the tomato fight? I'd love to find out how that is. I may indeed visit the tomato festival this year when it does happen and as far as favorite areas of this town it's hard to say i do enjoy the murals the mining railroad mural was my favorite but i do love the little storefronts the different types of architecture the history itself and that it's a nice little quaint inner town city area that you could visit learn some history take some pictures and just enjoy a few hours here We're either shopping dining or doing what i'm doing riding a scooter around on the sidewalks here 
in downtown Pittston. We'd love to hear your thoughts on what your favorite part of the city was or favorite part of this video. And once again, big thanks to Hubsco for reaching out to me to share the Porto Max scooter with all of you. Anyways, thanks for riding along with me on that fun little product here in downtown Pittston. Safe riding, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.